morning, everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White. And I just noticed that intro was the wrong intro that had something to do about the June 2020, June 2022 updates. And that's not what this is today. So I'll make sure I switch that intro back to the one it should be. I'm not sure how long it's been that way. Maybe since June. Who knows? Anyway, <laughs> welcome to the Photography Masterclass. For those of you who are new and watching for the first time, thanks for hanging out with me. If you are watching on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, great. You can hang out there and watch all you want. But if you want to participate in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. That's where the main chat will be. And I see people in the main chat already like William Bruce, Voodoo Val, uh, Steve, General Kenobi, Bobby, Voodoo Val again, <laughs> saying ha ha. And uh, I see some folks over on YouTube and Facebook. I see Sheila and I see Dorothy and I see others popping in now. And again, you can hang out in all those various places. But if you want to participate in the main chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live and sign in with your Adobe ID, which is free to create if you don't already have one. All right. Um, <laughs> when um, I'm just reading the chat. Anyway, um, today we're going to be taking a look at something that's just again the topic that keeps coming up people want to do things on their phones and their ipads and their uh, mobile devices so we're going to spend a whole master class just on mobile what you can and can't do um and maybe some things that you may not have known you can and can't do so we're going to do those things we're going to concentrate on lightroom and photoshop on mobile and uh, i'm just going to if i show you anything on the desktop it's literally just to show you hey it, it ended up on the desktop too but all the work's going to be done on mobile so for those of you who are new, um, this is our Friday Masterclass series. So we do, uh, each one of the evangelists does at least one Masterclass. I think Paul does two or three or four, I don't know. Paul does a lot of things. Uh, but we have them on Photoshop, photography, um, audio visual, graphic design, UI, UX design, and um, of course, digital painting and drawing. So you have a whole day of learning. And yes, you can always come back and watch the replays because most people can't hang out all day, and it is Friday. If it's a nice day, you might want to get outside. All right, um, so what are we going to do today? Now let's get the, now that we've got the housekeeping out of the way, uh, we're going to take a look at mobile. So first I will show you the desktop just to kind of show you a couple of things of where we got started, and then we'll go all the way into mobile. Phone, iPad, memory cards, digital cameras, the whole nine yards. All right, so let's pop over to the computer first. For those of you who were with me a few weeks ago in the master class, we did this live shoot in studio. So we had a, a, a model come in and we just showed how to light the model. So we did various lighting setups and we used the, uh, the brand new or fairly new Westcott uh, spot, which is uh, great for doing uh, designs on your subject or on the background. So we had a lot of fun with that. But this shoot, so I'll, I'll tell you how these images got to where they are now. When I was shooting this in studio, I was, you saw me, I was on my, I was on a MacBook, I was using Lightroom Classic, I was shooting tethered. So therefore the images were coming in off the camera as I took them right onto a folder on the hard drive and right into Lightroom Classic. So you could see them as you took each shot or I could see them as I took each shot. Great, so that was local on that one computer. Then I took that folder and I literally opened up Lightroom. So Lightroom Classic is what I shot into. I opened up Lightroom because that wasn't my main Lightroom Classic catalog. That was just one that I used for tethering. So it has no ties to my uh, regular catalog. It has no syncing turned on. It was just a standard standalone computer shooting tether. So I took that folder, the results, and I drug that folder into Lightroom. So you have Lightroom Classic and you have Lightroom. And as you know, Lightroom is the quote unquote, a lot of people refer to it as the cloud version, but it's the version that syncs, your, syncs and backs up your originals to the cloud. So this, um, these 64 images uh, were shot in raw. I converted them to DNG first, and then I drug the folder in and they were shot in raw and they exist in the cloud. So if I were to click on one of these images, and I were to go to the info, it would tell me that this image is an original in the cloud, but we're looking at locally a smart preview. That's fine. But originally, the, the original DNG is in the cloud. That means 
uh, if this something were to happen to this computer or something were to happen to my whole house, that those images would be backed up. I get a new computer, I sign in, they're all there. Okay, so that's how the images got in the cloud in the first place. Now, because I have Lightroom Classic syncing to the cloud as well, the next time I launched Lightroom Classic, those images came down from the cloud into the folder I told it to always put images into, and they're in Lightroom Classic as their originals too. So that way I have the best of both worlds. I have my originals in Lightroom Classic with all my other 269,000 images. And they're the original raw files or DNGs that I converted. And they're where they're supposed to be in my catalog and they're in a collection and so forth and so on. So I can do anything I would normally do with Lightroom Classic. However, since they're in the cloud, that also means they're on all my mobile devices. So if I were to bring up my iPhone right here, and I were to show you my iPhone, like so, you see I have that same album and or collection here as well. So I have these images in the cloud on my iPhone. Great, let's move the iPhone out of the way for a minute. I have them also on my I, iPad. There we go, <laughs> just make sure I hit the right button. So they're on the iPad because I didn't have to do anything special for the phone or the iPad because all I had to do was go to the App Store, whether it's iOS or Android, download Lightroom, sign in, and boom, they're all there. All the images that are synced to the cloud, whether they came from Lightroom Classic or whether they came from Lightroom, are automatically on my mobile devices. Great. That solves that issue. I don't have to worry about it if I started on desktop. But again, today's class is about a mobile workflow. So let's pretend I didn't start on desktop. Or let's pretend I have some new images that were shot and I'm out and, out and about and I don't have um, my, your sound is gone, done. Can you guys not hear me? Like no one else is complaining. So I'm going to take that as a, as a down up because <laughs> I'm sure I would get a lot of people saying I can't, they can't hear me. And I see the meter, so it looks like you can hear me. All right, anyway, um, audio is good. Great. Okay, so um, what I was going to say is let's say you start now, now with one of these. You basically have a memory card uh, that you shot with your camera, whatever your camera is, DSLR, mirrorless, whatever it is. Um, and you now are out and about and you say, hey, I use my professional camera and I want to get those images into, um, into my workflow, into my mobile devices. Now, most Mobile devices, especially phones, don't have a built-in card reader because it's a phone. You can already take pictures with it. Why would you need a card reader? Uh, so they're not designed, phones and iPads and so forth and so on, out of the box, aren't designed for a professional photography workflow, meaning using your regular camera. Uh, but that doesn't stop you from bringing those images in. So for example, if we go back to me for a second, I've got this device, which is lightning on one side, so it's a lightning connector on one side, and an SD card reader on the other side. So this SD card reader will allow me to bring that memory card right into my phone, or into my iPhone, or into a lightning-enabled iPad. Most of the iPads now that ship the newer ones, the Pros were the first ones to start, but now even the newer regular iPads have a, a USB-C. So you don't need the lightning connector anymore. So since my iPad is USB-C, it's an iPad Pro, I have one of these connected to it. It's a dock. So Ethernet, extra USB port. So if you want to plug in some other kind of card reader, but it also has card memory card slots on it too. So it's got SD and micro SD. So I don't have to worry about... Um, Having a card reader, as long as I have this device, because this does it all. It gives me fast speed when I'm in the office for Ethernet. It gives me USB to connect other things. It's got USB-C on the end. So I just plug that into my iPad Pro or regular iPad with USB-C. And I can bring images in from a card. So now that we know the devices we would need, and by the way, that USB-C device should work on Android devices with USB-C as well. Um, now that we know that that's how it would work, so I would take this memory card, I would plug it into the card reader on the dock 
I already have one plugged into the iPad Pro for the video. So let's go ahead and plug the card reader card into the card reader on that same dock, and nothing happens. Um, so let's go back to the iPad. Nothing happens because the iPad by default doesn't just recognize the cards when plugged in and start bringing things up. It would in the in the OS application. So the OS Photos app would say, hey, you plug the card in. Do you want to bring those photos in? But since I'm already in Lightroom, Lightroom doesn't do anything. It just says, hey, you know, I'm sitting here waiting for you to tell me what to do. So in the upper right corner, your menu there, you would normally tap Add Photos, which is the way you would add photos into Lightroom from any source, and you would choose Add Photos. Now, you'll notice at the very bottom, it looks like that's the one I want. It's the from camera device, which would mean either a camera's been plugged in or your memory card reader's been plugged in and away you go. However, what I have found, at least in my experience on the iPad Pro, is that Apple makes a USB-C to SD card reader like this one. This one's the lightning one, but they also make one for USB-C. That device uses that feature. Like if I plug that device in, Lightroom sees it and uses that feature. But if I plug in this other weird third party dock, like I'll, I'll tap on it just to show you what happens. I get a weird permissions error and I've already gone in and addressed this and it still just will not bring them in. I'm thinking, oh man, I can't bring in my cards. That sucks. You can't. So if you run into that where you try and use the one that looks like the one you should use and it doesn't work, let me show you the one that will work. So instead of saying from camera device, if camera device doesn't work, say or tap on from files. So if I tap on from files, that'll navigate you to your iCloud drive. But if you tap on browse, you'll see your device listed in the devices. So that Nikon Z62 is the actual memory card. That's what the card is called. And it sees them there. So if I tap on that, that's addressing that actual memory card that's plugged into the iPad. And if I go to DCIM, which is the folder that normally has all your images, there they are. So I see my raw files. These were shot in raw on a Z6 or Z62. And if I scroll down, there's some ones I want at the very bottom here. And I can just go ahead. I'm just going to start tapping on. Oh, let me hit select. I'm just going to start tapping on some random ones. Because if I don't, by the way, if you don't hit select, it just assumes you want to bring on the first one you tapped in. So or as soon as you want to bring in the first one you tapped on. So in this case, since I want more than one, I hit select first, and then I'm going to say I want that one. And I'm just, I, they're all the same. I'm just randomly picking a few here. I want that one, and we can go back and even get one of the way different ones. That one, and yes, you can bring them all, for the, bring them all in. For those of you who just say, hey, I just, I don't want to select, I just want them all. Um, but in this case, I don't want them all. I'm just bringing in a few. Okay, so now, don't hit done. Because <laughs> that's the, the other mistake I make. Is that I hit done. Okay, I've done selecting. And no, it's not done selecting. It's, um, <laughs> you want to actually say open. So if I say open instead of done, then it should start bringing those images in. So, um Fred is asking what brand um, was the dock that I'm using, and it's called the Hyperdrive. So that's the one. So look for Hyperdrive uh, USB-C dock. All right. So those raw files have now made their way in to Lightroom on my iPad. There they are, the five, five or how many ever I selected. They're there. They're, they're in. And I can see the cloud icon in the upper right corner is now uploading them. Because if you have an internet connection when you do this, they will upload to the cloud and back up. So even when you're out and about, you're in the field, you don't have a laptop with you, you're in the middle of a jungle, you're in the middle of a beach, you're in the middle of somewhere. If you have a 4G or 5G connection, great, your images will back up. If not, they'll just stay local on your device until you do get an internet connection and then they will um, back up at that point. They will upload to the cloud. So for example, um, I'm watching them come in on the desktop. So if I switch over to the desktop, there they are. They're, in the de they're on the desktop already because the desktop was left open. So back at home, 200, 500, 2,000 miles away, whatever it is, 
um, those images would also be on my computer at home because I left Lightroom open. Or the next time I open Lightroom, they would come in. Great. All right. So the images came into Lightroom and they, I, I like the fact also that they come in to the album I'm in because that saves me time. Um, cause a lot of times when you add photos, they just go to the all photos action or area, and then you have to add them to the albums you want them in. But because I was in the album, I wanted them on, they came in here first. Great. So now I can do anything I would normally do. So for example, if I tap on one of these photos, great. It takes me into Lightroom's editing capabilities where I see all the normal stuff that I normally would see. So for example, if I tap on uh, browse profiles and I choose Adobe landscape, which is a raw profile. You, you guys see me do this all the time. That's the one I want. If I go back from there. So now it's on Adobe landscape. If I hit auto tone, which I always do, there's my auto tone. Great. Um, that horizon looks a little crooked to me. It could just be the way it is, but it looks a little crooked to me. So I can go to crop. And I just start doing all the things I normally do. I can straighten it a little bit. There we go. That looks straighter to me now. I'm done. And then I can go in and start doing any other editing I want. So if I go into, um, we did the lighting already from auto, but if I want to lighten it up a little bit more, keep in mind this was sunrise, so it wasn't that bright out yet. Great. If I want to go to color, I've got all my color capabilities. So I want to warm it up a little bit more. I can warm it up a little bit more, but I kind of like the, the, the blue. Um, if I go to effects, I can, for example, add a little dehaze, which I normally do to my photos, especially the ones outside, and add a little dehaze to the photo. So I'm doing all the same Lightroom stuff I normally do. Um, if I go in and scroll up, uh, if I go to detail, it's already got some sharpening applied to it, but I can apply a little bit more sharpening. If I go back to effects for a second, I can add some texture, not a ton, just a little. And um, I can also do any local adjustments I want. So if I go to masking, for example, uh, if I go to the masking, oops, masking here, I can choose to, why am I not seeing what I want here? Oh, there it is, plus sign. If I hit the plus sign at the bottom, I've got all the same masking capabilities. So uh, no, I don't need a tour. I kind of got this. If I choose select sky, uh, it will detect the sky in the image, hopefully. And there's the sky has now been masked, so I can do anything to the sky that I want. So maybe I want to add a little bit more dehaze to the sky. Not that much. I could really overdo it, but no, we don't want to overdo it. Uh, any color things I want to do to the sky. So again, I want to make it really blue, or if I want to make it really warm, I can do any one of those things or make it a different color altogether. Great. So it is, I'm just editing to taste at this point, doing all the normal things I would do in Lightroom. Wow, that really looks blue on your screen. Hang on. <laughs> Back off that a little bit. Just looking at seeing how blue that looks for you guys. Okay. So done. I've done the masking. I've done everything. And of course, once you're out of the edit, meaning as long as you're in editing, nothing sinks. But as soon as I back out of that image, now those changes will sync to the cloud as well. And therefore, um, uh, Donna's asking a, a storage question, so I'll answer that in a second. So therefore, all those changes sync across the cloud as well. So the image was already backed up and uploaded. It, we already saw it on the computer. So every time I make an edit, the only thing that has to get backed up again, or not backed up, but synced, is the metadata of the edit. So very small file, very small amount of data. Every time you move sliders, that's nothing basically. It's a, it's a text file description. And that's all that syncs from that point on because the image has already been backed up. And since these are non-destructive edits that I can go and tweak to my heart's content anywhere that I am on any device, I can uh, do those edits. They sync, they're quick, and I don't have to worry about um, ever destroying the image because again, anything I do here, if I don't like it when I get home, and just undo it or change it. All right, so um, Donna's asking, how much disk space do you keep in the cloud? Um, okay, I, that, I, that can mean a few different things. I'll, I'll answer the, the usual questions that I'm der deriving from that question. 
when you sign up for a cloud plan, you're signing up in terabytes. So it's one terabyte on up. I think I have either a five or 10 terabyte plan. All right, so that's how much storage space I have. How much I'm keeping in the cloud means, um, I mean, I can go look at any given time. I can go here, I think. Nope, it won't show me on, on mobile. Let's go on desktop. If I go on desktop and find my mouse, there it is. So I have a 10 terabyte plan. I have eight, not even one terabyte yet in the cloud. So 880 gigs. So that answers your question technically how much I'm keeping in the cloud right now, 880 gigs. Because out of those, um, does it show me how many photos? Out of those 74,000 photos in 482 albums, uh, most of those are just smart previews that came over from Lightroom Classic. Like I've only just started doing um, back up the whole shoot to the cloud. So I'm just kind of experimenting, testing the water, seeing how much space I use up, how quickly. Uh, so hopefully that answers all your questions. Uh, it's basically smart previews from Lightroom Classic, which take up virtually very little space compared to the original RAW. If you're backing up the full version like you did from Lightroom, whether it's iPad, phone, or desktop, then it's whatever size those images are going up to the cloud and they will stay there forever until you you delete them which i can't imagine why you would delete images that you want anyway all right so um and if now that we're back here on the desktop by the way just for a quick second here is the raw file we just edited if i go look at the edits um oh maybe this is not the one or hasn't backed up yet this one hasn't come down yet but we would be able to see the edits uh that have happened am i looking at the right one Yeah, it should be this one. So it looks like those edits haven't come down yet, but as soon as those edits come down, you would actually be able to see the edits in the editing panel to make any further adjustments to them. It says it's done, but I'm not seeing it yet. And no, it's not this one. Yeah, it's not that one. Okay, but technically that one should get the update as soon as it's finished doing its thing up and down. All right, back to the iPad. Okay, so I made some changes to that one raw file. I've got the other image. So let's let's backtrack a second. So you've now seen two ways to get images onto my mobile device. Number one, images that were shot and uploaded on desktop, up to the cloud, down to my device. Number two, images that were shot on a, on a camera or whatever, imported directly into my um, mobile device and synced up to the cloud whenever I have an internet connection or not. Um, synced up to the cloud at some point and then any edits I do should also sync up to the cloud and back down to the actual images. Okay. What's another way? Remember this device? This thing you're always carrying in your pocket? Well, what if you take a photo with this? So let me uh, switch back to the desktop so I can show you the phone for a second. And if I go look at the uh, phone here. All right, so there's my, uh, and here, let's, let's just simply hide this for a second and hide that for a second and hide that for a second. <laughs> All right, so here's the phone. And uh, let's say that I, I get out of Lightroom and I go into the, the photos and I see, um, I see these, these last five shots. I, oh, let's get out of there. There we go. I see these last five pictures I took of the dogs when they were in my studio this morning before I, um, before I, I went live today. So the, the dogs are standing there. I call them my live audience now. They're, they're my live audience officially in the studio. And uh, those images were just shot with a regular iPhone camera on the camera roll in uh, either RAW or JPEG or HIEC, -E whatever the high efficiency format is called. And uh, I can also shoot RAW on my phone. So for example, since the guy asked or someone asked about the hyperdrive, let's go back to the camera. Let's uh, fire up the camera and let's take a picture of that hyperdrive. All right, and also note that I have the ability to switch to RAW. So let's switch to RAW. 
Let's take a, a picture of the hyperdrive here. All right, and there it is. All right, so the picture's been taken and it's on the camera roll. There it is. And now if I, if I pop out of the camera and I go into Lightroom and I go to my all photos area, there's the hyperdrive. Now, how did that get into Lightroom? I didn't tell it to import. I didn't do anything. I just shot it with my regular camera and it's already in Lightroom and it will, you know, it's, it's syncing. I can see the little uh, cloud icon. It's already putting it up in the cloud. The reason that that particular image is already in Lightroom is because I have a preference set. If I go to my settings here, app settings, I have a preference set to auto import photos and videos. I don't do screenshots because if I'm taking a screenshot, is the white car a mouse? No, it's a, it's a little Hot Wheels car. Uh, if I'm taking screenshots, I don't need those in Lightroom. I'm usually taking screenshots for documentation purposes or uh, whatever. I don't need those in my photo library. So I have, I'm so glad when the team allowed us to turn off screenshots. So screenshots are turned off, but photos and videos are turned on. Now, if you go turn this on right now, it's not retroactive. It doesn't go through your, you know, tens of thousands of photos and start bringing them into Lightroom. It's only from that point forward that you turned it on. But once you turn it on, any new photos you take on the camera roll will, or just photos that end up on the camera roll, photos you've downloaded, whatever, will, will automatically be imported into Lightroom the next time you launch Lightroom. So that's how the image got there automatically right off the bat. Okay. Um, Let's see, does it say it's done? Okay, so it says it's synced and backed up. So now if I were to switch over to Lightroom, which is hiding because I hit it. If I were to switch over to Lightroom and I were to go back to all photos, I just saw it up there already, but if we were to go look at it, oh, hang on. All the way at the top there, there's the hyperdrive, there's the doggos. Let's bring this into our same, our same, how do we photograph this? Like, so for example, a couple of these photos are not mine. These, This is a famous meme you've seen, but I downloaded a copy of it to my camera roll, so therefore it got imported. I can delete those out of Lightroom. But anyway, there they are. And now if I say, how did I do that? And, um, nope, wrong one. If I said, how to light and shoot, that a hyperdrive will be at the end because it was the um in chronological order that's the last photo okay so there it is and i can of course move this up let's get it up to the top here and we'll put it there okay so there it is um the dng because that's what apple shoots in raw they shoot it in dng there's the mattel hot wheels car Anyway, and there's the hyperdrive. So I can do anything I want to do to that image as well because it's here. If I were to go look at my iPad, I think it's there already. Uh, so if I go to the iPad, it's there as well. So remember, it popped in at the end and I can now um, go do anything I want to do with it on the iPad. So it's already on the phone because the minute I took it and launched Lightroom, it got imported onto the phone I waited a minute or two for it to sync up the full version of it, 12 megapixel DNG file up to the cloud. And then um, it came down to the iPad and the desktop because they're based on the cloud as well. All right, so someone says, um, I have an Android. I do exactly the same thing using raw format. Awesome. Uh, I don't have raw in my format in my phone. Well, it depends on your phone. So raw came out, I believe, with either the iPhone 11 or 12. I think the 12. Uh, 12 Pros and, 12, of course, 13 Pros uh, on the iPhone side. Um, and it's a setting, even though, even if you have an iPhone 12 or 13 Pro, it's not on by default. You have to go into the settings, turn on raw before that raw button will even show up. Because they don't want amateurs <laughs> tapping raw by mistake and filling up all that space with raw files that they're just taking of random things that they don't want in raw. So that's why it's something you have to purposely go turn on and you have to um, 
once you turn it on, you then you have to even choose it each time you're going to shoot because they don't want you to have it on all the time by accident. All right, not even iPhone. Um, I don't know what that means. Okay, so if you have an iPhone 12 or 13 Pro, it has RAW built in. Let's say you don't have an iPhone 12 or 13 Pro since we're talking about mobile. Um, if you were to go in to Lightroom on your phone, let's go back to the desktop. And let's bring the phone back up. If you were to go into Lightroom on your phone, you notice that there's a camera icon in the lower right hand corner. There's the the um, the plus sign on the left side of those two buttons. That's for bringing in photos that for whatever reason they get imported. So if you don't have auto import turned on, you can import them manually. But also there's a camera icon. That camera icon, you'll notice at the very top of the screen that says DNG, I can shoot in RAW on an older iPhone or an older device that doesn't shoot RAW natively in its own camera app. So we were shooting RAW in Lightroom long before Apple decided to add it to the built-in camera. Uh, I think this goes back as far as the iPhone 7 at least goes back that far, maybe even the six. So that time frame, both J, I'm sorry, both Android and iOS, we could shoot in RAW from the um, iPhone. I'm sorry, from the Lightroom camera. So if I were to take another picture of, let's say, this mouse, that it, I'm shooting it in uh, Pro format, which means I can change my settings. But that image will now be, of course in Lightroom because we took it with the Lightroom camera and because I have the Lightroom camera set to DNG, um, it will import, it's already there, it will upload into um, the cloud as a DNG file shot with the iPhone, or sorry, with the Lightroom camera. So we've been doing RAW in Lightroom on your camera, on your phone for years, many years. Someone said since the 6S. I knew it was around the iPhone 7, but 6S looks like it had it too. So long, long, long time ago. So if you've got a phone from a 6S on up or Android from that time frame on up, you can most likely shoot in RAW from the Lightroom camera if your uh, native camera doesn't do it. Okay, now that we know that that's, that will come in or that will work, that's going to just come in to a random I'm sorry, not random. It's going to come into the all photos. So if I want to now move this into that same album we've been working on, I would tap the icon, the, the three dot menu icon. I would choose organize. I would choose add to uh, go to where that album is. It's in photography masterclass and it's in how I would light, how to light and photograph people. All right. So now that's been added to that album as well. So I jump out of this. I go to demo. Oh, I go to demo. I go to Photography Masterclass, and I go to How to Light and Photograph People, and if I go down to the bottom, there they both are. So there's the one um, that we just shot with the Lightroom camera, and there's the one we shot with the iPhone camera app. Both shot on the phone, both shot in RAW, both imported into Lightroom, both synced up to the cloud and backed up. So that's how you would just be out and about and shoot with your phone. So even if you like, one of the things that people, even though we've had the being able to shoot with raw on the Lightroom camera for years, it's just force of habit. You want, you see something in the moment and you want to take a picture, you bring up the native camera. It, it's just, no matter how good our camera was, <laughs> the, um, the native camera is always more accessible. Like you can, you can even access it just from a swipe from the home screen. You can access it from a button on the home screen. There's just it's so much you can access it usually from, um, from shortcuts, all kinds of ways to get to it faster. So people were shooting more and more with their regular built-in cameras. And that's why I have, because now I do shoot with the, I don't ever use the Lightroom camera anymore because now the iOS camera shoots raw. And because it's just always faster. It's always the one that I'm going to launch first. So in other words, in order for me to, um, 
Yes, DNG is raw. So uh, I see Jimmy saying, my bad, DNG is the raw setting for Adobe. Pro is the camera. Yes, Pro is just a, Pro is just a mode. So just like on a regular camera, we have auto. So you can put the Lightroom camera in auto and it just will take the best exposure it thinks it can take. Pro means you're going to change the settings. You're going to change um, the shutter speed. You're going to change, um, here, let me go back. You're going to change the ISO. You're going to change the uh, white balance. So just like you, you can change the exposure compensation. Just like with a regular camera in Pro, you're going to change what you want to change or what you want to shoot. Uh, so if I were to go in, uh, out of Pro, if I were to go to automatic, all that stuff goes away and it just takes an automatic shot, just like your phone does for the most, most part. If I were to go into HDR, high dynamic range, it will take two photos and composite them together as uh, one light exposure, one dark exposure, and composite them together automatically in HDR. So you have even a long exposure and depth capture. So if you want to get that long, um, um, smooth, silky look from a waterfall, you can do long exposure with the Lightroom camera. So Lightroom camera, it's got a lot in it. And it, it, again, I purposely go there when I want to do these kinds of things. And I know the built-in camera can't do those things. So just remember, you've got a professional camera in your phone from a settings perspective. Um, just go into the Lightroom and choose the camera and you will then be able to control all of these aspects of your photography. So if I go to Pro and I say that I want to, um, I say that I want to change the ISO, then I have a slider for the ISO and I can move the slider around and change the ISO to whatever I want or anything else or you can always of course hit auto or bring it back to auto and it will do auto so anything that you want to change you can change you even have your white balance settings so you have your um day daylight balance you have your tungsten you have your cloudy so you can even see it on screen you can see it previewing the various looks that you're going to get based on the different uh, white balance setting you set it to all right and of course auto white balance will do what it thinks it needs to do so, and just like any other raw file, if I had it on auto, but then I wanted to change it to cloudy later, it's a raw file. So it's going to let me change it to cloudy later. It's not going to be baked in because I'm shooting in raw. So DNG stands for digital negative, and that is raw. Um, so even if it doesn't say R-A-W at the top of the screen, it says DNG, that is a raw file. All right, uh, I should push my phone camera to the very limit right now. You should go do that but after the class. <laughs> So with that said, let's switch back over and now let's talk about, uh, I think we got a lot of the Lightroom stuff handled. I'm going to do one more thing as far as culling images on the, um, on the iPad and then we'll get into um, editing. All right, so let's switch back. Hang on, let's do this real quick just in case I come back here. Okay. All right. So we did this shoot last week, or I'm sorry, we did this shoot a few weeks ago and I didn't really go through any of the images. I just kind of like, you know, imported them in and I picked out a favorite and edited that favorite and posted on show or social. I didn't really do anything else. And we have added some new images to this as well, but let's go through the ones we shot and just show you how that workflow would look. Now this was just literally testing the camera. She's half blinking, half eyes closed. This is just a test shot, wouldn't use it for anything. How do I mark this as a reject? Because I'm not going to use it for anything. Like, like it should be deleted so we're not tying up unnecessary cloud space. All right, so you'll notice um, down the right-hand side of the screen near the bottom, you've got some icons for various things. So I went into the info icon, the eye icon before, when I wanted to see if this was an original versus a smart preview. But you got this star icon, and it, you notice it says speed review. If you swipe up and down on the left side, it will give you star ratings. If you swipe up and down on the right side of the image, it will give you flag ratings. So for example, if I wanted to mark this, which I don't, but if I wanted to mark this a five-star photo, I'm putting my finger, here you can see me do it, I'm putting my finger on the left side of the screen here, Let's get this 
over a little. There we go. Putting my finger on the left side of the screen here, and I'm swiping up and down. So that's literally giving me um, the ability to mark it as a, as a uh, star rating. If I, oh, and sorry, we're on the wrong screen here. No, we're on the right screen. You can see me do, doing this. No, you can't. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. Wrong screen. Uh, so let's back out because I didn't show you everything. All right, so we're looking at these images. I want to start calling them now. I tapped on the first one. I talked about how her eyes were half closed because it was just a test shot. Then on the, on the right hand side, we're normally in editing, but then down here at the bottom right, you see this star icon, this little star. So that lets me know that I can now do uh, rating with my finger. So on the left hand side of the screen, if I swipe up or down, I'm rating it with the number of stars I want. And then on the left side of the screen, I'm marking it with a flag. So it would normally be in the middle, no flag rating. I could mark it as a pick or I can mark it as a reject. That would be a reject. So I just swipe down on the right anytime I want to reject and then swipe over to the next photo. That photo is okay, but let's say I wanted to mark it with a four star rating. Okay, now it has a four star rating. Swipe. That photo's uh, terribly underexposed because the flash didn't fire. Reject. Next. Reject. Next. That one's okay. I don't, I don't necessarily do anything to the okay photos. That's a photo I took on purpose with a white balance target so I can white balance the rest of the shots. I, don't, I could keep it or not. Um, that one, actually, I kind of like that one. So we'll give that one a five star. I could also swipe up to make it a pick. I really like that one too. So you get the idea. If you like a shot, swipe left or right to make it stars or pick flag or reject or both. If you want stars and a pick flag, you could do both. There are no color labels, unfortunately, because color labels never made it over from Lightroom Classic into Lightroom, sadly. I wish there were. All right, um, I'm, I'm gonna be done calling because I would just be doing the same thing over and over again. Let's say that I like that one one more. All right, so I'm gonna give that one five stars and a pick. All right, so now I've gone through all 64 files. I've rated them. I could then say filter filter my rejects, show me those reject files. So then I can just select them and delete them. So I can say select photos, select all of those and delete. So now I'm telling it to delete those photos. Those photos are gone, clear the um, filter. And now I'm back to the ones I keep. So I'm basically doing the same process on my iPad that I would do on um, um, on my desktop. Okay, so now we've done that. And now I've got, if I were to, by the way, take two fingers and tap, I can tap and see the ones that are my stars and my picks. So you can always cycle through all the overlays with a two finger tap. So two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers. So it's like five or six different overlays you can cycle between. So I can show, and by the way, I can also just filter. I don't have to show the overlays. I can just say, show me all my five stars. They're all my five stars. Great. Now, while we're at it, let's go, let's get out of the filter for a second. And I like a couple of these shots as well. So I'm going to go here and say, that's a pick. And I really like this, this kind of where the sun's starting to come up and give us that warm, that warm glow. All right. So now I've, I've marked those as well. So now if I say, show me my favorites, they're all my favorites. And then I can do whatever I want to do with them. Okay. So now let's talk about, we already know all the editing we can do with Lightroom. We kind of already did some of that. Now let's talk about what can we do with Photoshop? Because we do have Photoshop on iPad. Right now, iPad is the only platform Photoshop Photoshop is on. There are, there's Photoshop Express, which is on iOS and Android, on your phone and on Android as well. Um, so you can do a lot with Photoshop Express. So it's not, it's not Photoshop, but it's a lot of features you would be able to use and take advantage of. So go check out Photoshop Express if you want to do this on your phone or if you want to do this on Android. Okay, um, so now I've kind of identified photos that I like. I'm going to go ahead and clear the filter. 
And now let's say that I want to, I want to do a composite. So I'm going to start with this photo with the, which is five stars on a pick. I want to do some things that I can do in, in Photoshop that either I can't do in Lightroom or be harder to do in Lightroom. So for example, I want to hit this share button and you notice there's an edit in Photoshop choice that you'll only see on iPad today. So if I say edit in Photoshop, it will down in this case, since the original wasn't downloaded, it's going to download the original first. Then it will fire up Photoshop on my iPad and it will start opening that image in Photoshop on iPad. And there it is. So now I'm in Photoshop on iPad where I can do a lot more things than I could with Lightroom. I can actually create layers. I can add text. I can add adjustment layers. I can clone and, and uh, not clone, but I can, add, wait, can I clone? I can't remember what's, what's in here so far. <laughs> I might be able to clone, but I can certainly use the healing brush. I can use background removal. I can, um, I'm trying to think of things I can't do in Lightroom. I can make uh, subject selections and then do things with the subject that I couldn't do in Lightroom. So, so forth and so on. So let's, um, let's jump in and let's do a composite. I want to do two things. I want to add a different background to this photo and I want to add text to it. All right. So with that said, let's do the background removal first. So I'm going to tap on the lasso and the lasso will give me all these various selection tools, including object selection and magic wand and marquee and all these cool things, select subject even, but you'll notice that there's a remove background too. And all it's gonna do is a simple mask. It's gonna do a select subject and it's gonna mask out everything that's not, that it doesn't think is the subject. So there it is, it did it. It even left that little strand of hair in the background as well. So great, I've got my subject with one tap, remove background. If it didn't do it perfect, the mask is there. I can go in and paint in areas that it missed or paint out areas it missed or paint back in areas it shouldn't have taken out. And that's great. All right, so now that I've got that there, I'm gonna go ahead and now add a photo, which is something I couldn't do in Lightroom. I can't add another photo to a Lightroom shot. All right, so just go ahead and tap the beneath the text uh, icon is the go look at and go grab more files. Now I hope that the Lightroom team I'm sorry, I hope that the Photoshop team, because this will be a Photoshop ask, I hope that the Photoshop team adds to this category, let me go get another Lightroom photo. Like, I, I'm, I'm editing this one Lightroom photo, I want to bring in another Lightroom photo. That makes sense. So I wish they would let us do that, but not yet. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, since I know the card reader is still there, and I, you want to bring in one of those, um, those beach photos, I'm going to tap Files. And I'm going to go browse. I'm going to go to my card reader. I'm going to go here, here, same where, same place we did in um, in Lightroom. And I'm going to go ahead and find the one I want. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom because those are kind of the blue ones I want. All right. Now, what's cool is these, remember, these are raw. These are off the Z6 camera. So if I tap on one of these, to open up, guess what it does once it gets ready to open it up? It opens it up in Camera Raw because Camera Raw is built into Photoshop on iPad. So even as I'm opening up a raw file, it just doesn't open it, it lets me do all the Camera Raw stuff I was gonna do. Does the Apple Pencil work well on Photoshop on the iPad? Absolutely, we're gonna be using that. All right, so let's use it now. Uh, so I'm gonna choose uh, Auto and I'm gonna choose um, Let's see, I want to go into effects. I want to add a little, do, 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 do. oh, I forgot it doesn't have quite, oh, there it is. Add a little dehaze. There we go, add a little dehaze to that. And I'm gonna go back to light and bump up the exposure just a little bit more. And you get the idea. So once I'm done of making the adjustments to the raw file and I hit done, it brings in that raw file as a layer inside of Photoshop. 
and I can still tweak it more. So if it needed to be scaled, I can scale it. It brings me into free transform and it's, it just filled up the frame. So I'm good. That's what I want it. But if I need to scale it down or do anything more to it, I could. All right. So let's go ahead and just simply tap done. And now you can see it's in the layers panel. It's on a layer above her. So we're just going to simply use the Apple pencil and drag that layer. Maybe we're not. There we go. Drag that layer up. So now that puts her up above it. I'm going to go to the move tool. Since I'm on her layer, I'm just going to move her over from a composition standpoint over to that side. Great. Now, um, the lighting is obviously off because this was taken early morning. She's very bright, studio lit. We get that. It's not a great composite from a, from a realism standpoint, but just showing you what can be done. Now, we can also make some adjustments to her. So notice I'm on her layer and I get the ability on the right hand side, add a clipping adjustment. When you add a clipping adjustment, it just, it adds an adjustment layer, but it clips it to the layer you're on automatically. So you don't have to do the two step process. So if I do a color balance on her, now it's clipped to just her and I can maybe make her a little bluer, a little bluer, kind of match some of that, that she's already on um, to kind of balance her out. So she's not so, um, flesh Tony <laughs> compared to that blue hour photo. And also I can go back to her layer and on her layer, I want to, uh, add another clip adjustment. And this time I'm going to do, uh, let's do levels. So I'm using a levels adjustment on her kind of bring down her levels a little bit. Not that much. Something like that. Just kind of make her a little bit more contrasted. Okay, great. Now let's add another layer. Let's go in and um, if not, what am I missing here? <laughs> Conversation. Okay. If I want to go in and add text, I just tap the text tool, tap anywhere I want the text to be. And it adds, um, it adds a text layer. Oh, I'm <laughs> typing on the wrong keyboard. All right, let's go to this keyboard. And let's go ahead and type in her name. All right. And I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it. Could be on a layer below. Let's hit done and see where that text layer is. Yeah, it's because it's being clipped. All right. Hold on a second. Let's unclip that. I'll tell you what. It's just easier to get rid of it and do it again. All right, let's go to her layer. There we go. Now let's add the text. Now we can see it. Or maybe not. Done. It's because it's still trying to... Ah. Okay, this is all user error. Hang on one second, one more time. This is all me. Hang on. There we go. That's what I was trying to get to. It was stuck in it wanting to make this into a clipped adjustment and I didn't want that. Okay. So now I'm going to the color, tap my eyedropper, go grab the color of her blouse. There we go. And go back to this uh, text layer and I can say whatever font I want. Ooh, that's a cool font. Say whatever font I want that to be in, although I didn't select it first. There we go. There we go. And of course we can make it whatever size we want it to be. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm not crazy about that font, but it was worth a shot. Let's get a nice script. Who doesn't like a nice script? All right, there we go. Done. Okay, so we brought in an image from Lightroom. We added another image from uh, the files area or from the camera roll or from wherever you want to get your image from, except Lightroom for some weird reason. 
We adjusted her layer. We added an adjustment. We add, brought in a raw file. We made that adjustment in camera raw. We adjusted her layer with a clipped adjustment. We added a text layer. And so now we have all of these things ready to go. And by the way, let's move that layer. Nope, we'll keep it where it is. We have all this ready to go. And now what do I do? Well, obviously I can export it right from Photoshop. I can save it for whatever format I want, but there's a send to Lightroom. So when I hit send to Lightroom, that will write out a PSD with all the layers and it will send it back to the same album that um, you had open and you got this image from in Lightroom. So to put it right next to the original, just like it does in Photoshop. So it says receiving the original now, and hopefully we get that before we run out of time. Um, there it is. And there it is. We can see it. So I can say open it and it opens it in Lightroom um, with, you know, as a composite, of course, because Lightroom doesn't really see the individual layers. And now I can make further adjustments to it here in Lightroom, but I don't, I wouldn't do that. I would just keep it as a Photoshop file ready to go. So if I were to wait for this to sync to the desktop, this would be synced to the desktop as a PSD as well with all the layers intact for me to edit. All right, folks, that's my time. Hopefully you got something out of this mobile workflow. And before I run out of time, I just want to say cheers. Have a great weekend. See you later, everybody.